Hello everybody, Prince of the Bear here, and we're back at Epcot, and from the sounds and the things in the background, you know, guessed it. You know what time it is. Flower and garden. We're here to eat all of the plants. Yes. So if you see me up in the bushes nomming on Maribel, mind your business. Be sure to find your way to the subscribe button. You heard the girl. is something you can find all year round at the land cart with hummus. I'm not sure why they put it on the menu for Flower and Garden this year, maybe just to sell more. So I'm gonna dip this tomato in this really thick hummus here. It's just a standard garlic hummus, pretty tasty. I would eat it like regularly. I mean, it's not as good as public hummus. It's a little bit thicker, but it's okay. I'll give it like a three out of five hummus. It's um. It'll get you through the park. But I wouldn't proactively come here for like flower and garden unless it's part of the garden graze and it's not, so I'm not sure what this is about. Land cart veggies and hummus. Not just veggies and hummus, but specifically land cart. I hope this means it was actually picked from the land. It probably wasn't. But we can dream, can't we? This hummus almost looks like paste. Like legit paste. Not necessarily a bad thing. Sticks to the veggies more, but it just looks like soon to be hard to make. Ooh, well, it tastes good. Mm, I'm not too on the greedy side. I don't mind though. Keep still the princess carrots here. It's a nice light snack. Get this. Eat. Put a butterfly tent. It's a bit basic but it will fill you up, lightly, probably not. Well, three and a half out of five claws. I would have liked to see like a flavored hummus, not just a plain hummus, but it's good. This is another snack you can find everywhere when it comes to just Disney parks in general. That's probably when we Hummus, which I think is funny, they took a picture of it just like this, like in the container with it open, and then pretzels. So like Bear thought it was a Mickey pretzel with hummus, and it's not. It's like the crackers. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this hummus. I've already failed myself here. Open the pretzels. Nice and salty. Oh, they're little O's. We don't usually get these snacks. Get a nice, like, healthy amount of hummus. Mmm. This hummus is much better than the hummus that comes with the veggies. I like this snack a lot more. I'm gonna give it a four out of five pretzels. This is a good um, snack for you to take, like, when you're in a queue, waiting for a ride. And you can get this year round, not just flower and garden, so worth it. Dip in to feel good. You basically just have at this cart two different hummus dippings. Which is why we should differentiate themselves with the hummus just a little bit more. I'm glad to have more plant-based snacks, but uh, we can dream a little bigger, darling. Definitely a better quality hummus, though. I'm not usually a fan of, a fan of like the the hard, like dry, like cracker type pretzel snacks. But this, I get on board with. I can definitely see dropping this into a lounge fly and snacking on this while I drink around the world. Still giving it three out of five clogs up. And so the real reason why we came to this cart, you don't have to go to Sunshine Seasons right now to get one of the best plant-based desserts you could possibly get at Epcot, the cookies and cream. I love this dessert so much. It's like some nice layers happening here. It's like a nice plant-based mousse. Cheers to the mousse. That was a big bite, but worth it. You can't beat the chocolate goodness. 
It is a five out of five. It's a princess it is dessert. If you come to Epcot, you can always go to Sunshine Seasons and get this dessert. It's 100% worth it. This is literally just the same mousse you can get inside the land. It's a Sunshine Seasons. I'm not complaining because I have that more readily available so I don't have to go down the escalator and wait in line. Be able to find a seat down there because you know how annoying it is sometimes you have to deal with the living with the land crowds. I prefer it this way, most definitely. With the flour. With the flour and everything. I'm gonna go ahead and dig in here, get some of the liars, get some of the cake for the princess eats it all because she is a cake connoisseur. You know I used to have a lot of pudding jokes. And then Cosby happened. Now I have nothing. This is good though. Four and a half out of five plots. If I had a sweet tooth, be the first place I come. Wouldn't even know or care if it was plant based. was in the past you just have this giant piece of bok choy pickle veggies and some rice so it's very much like it was in the past but a lot smaller portion the short rib feels a little um, difficult on the fork so I'm kind of scared but let's see how this works for us to the vegans So it's not bad, but it's not amazing. It's slightly improved from short ribs of the past, but it's pretty much the same. It's not super improved. It's like a two out of 10 on the heat scale, but the short ribs are just way too tiny for me. Like they have the portions from last year and I'm just not into that. So because they, they made the portions smaller, I'm gonna give it a two out of five portions were larger it'd probably be like a four out of five but I just I just can't I can't justify the price for this it's just eh of all the things returning to the festival this is the one I was looking forward to the absolute least my issue with this dish in years past is that short rib shaped does not make short rib uh, the name is not working for me this tasted to me more like a meatloaf dish, and usually like an Asian spice meatloaf than I've ever gotten short rib out of it. Uh, and if they called it meatloaf, I'd probably have a lot less beef with it, but as is, they keep going with this short rib thing. It's not getting it. It's a bit tougher than in years past, a little bit denser. Let's go and give it a full fork, get all the flavors. Let's, let's see what it's got for me this year. Amalgamous, Eastern flavored, mystery meat block. That is not short rib. Flavors, they're okay. Uh, it's still probably one of the most inventive things that you'll see done with Impossible at the festival, even though it's literally just a block cube of Impossible meat and it's seasoned and seared on both sides, but it is not short rib. You'd be better off calling it, just call it a meat block. That'd be more interesting, honestly. Uh, I like that they have the huge bok choy in here, though I wish it was a little bit more split so it's easier to eat. Using a plastic fork, you'd be all day trying to get that down your throat. If you're hungry, you won't be disappointed, but don't go in as a meat eater anyway. I try to get that taste like short rib. The flavors and density and texture are way off. Two and a half out of five plus. Impossible Olympia. This is different for me. New, different, and a whole new world. I'm actually really excited for this. It's like taquitos. It's flavored very sweetly and probably one of my favorite new additions to this festival. This is amazing and the fact that they give you five for five, this is a win. I'm gonna give this a five out of five and I'm gonna say it's a princess of these items. It's really good. I'm gonna tell you this as a community. You can decide whether or not it's a liar. I'm not telling you the way. I know Filipino food. 
I love lumpia. Can't say a host other things. How I know that, I'm never saying on this channel. Well, I am very, very picky. Very, very picky. Oh, my lumpia. You gonna put lumpia in a name, better as a point. Lumpia in the flavor, but the wrapping is all wrong. Not getting that flake inside of it, it's like crusty and on one end and then like super soft on the other. Whoever cooked this, we need some more time in the kitchen. This not mean it's an insult. I love cast members, but this is not lumpia. Now, wrapped uh, wrapped in pasta meat, flavored like lumpia? I'll give you that. Taquito? More taquito than lumpia. But it's still very tasty. And I will say, as far as a sort of like dish goes, this is a lot closer to lumpia than the short rib is. <laughs> the actual short rib. So at least on the flavors, they're getting a three and a half on a five cloth. Execution, I'm gonna give it a three. The rating is gonna be a three. It's close. It's good. And the number of them you're getting, you're getting five for this price is a steal. But uh, actual authentic lumpia, probably not. So here we have kind of a melted chocolate cake. You got um, a flour on here. I'm just gonna go this route. But like all of the, whatever this ice cream is supposed to be is, is melted. And that's fine. That's fine. That's what we're here for. It's like a dark chocolate vibe, but it's not that great. Are you getting that gluten-free taste from it? What is it, it does give me a gluten-free taste. It's almost like a black and white um, cupcake, but with raspberry. And I don't, I'm not that into it. I'm gonna give it a one out of five. This is not my jam. There's a lot going on in this chocolate cake. It's a chocolate cake with a black currant ganache, berry compote, chocolate ice cream, all vegan. Vegan. Uh, you got the ganache up here, a little raspberry, looks cakey, little berry compotes floating over here towards the side. Just go ahead and uh, scoop it. I'm gonna take the edible flour with me. Get the berry compote. Not to the cake is the worst part. If you're just giving us plant-based ice cream with the berry compote, this would be a thousand times better. As it is, it's two out of five. I don't really, I don't even really elaborate on that. Cake is so terrible. It doesn't even classify as a brownie. It feels like one of those like microwavable brownies you get in like a quick cuisine. One of little package and you would cook the food, but you'd always overcook the brownie because the directions are always off, the times are off. You know, microwaves, whatever in exact science. That's disappointing. It could have been a contender. Returning friend, the Tres Leches. It's fine as long as I don't eat the coconut topping. I usually enjoy it. Look at all that goodness. Ooh, I got some coconut flakes on there. <laughs> there, okay. So now look how pretty that is. It's gorge all up in there. I'm just gonna enjoy this bite. It tastes like batter. I don't know, so it's a little different than what I remember it to be. I don't know if I really like it. Last year, I loved it. This year, I don't know. Three out of five Trace Light Chase. It's just not hitting it on all cylinders for me today. The reigning vegan dessert champion from last year, the Trace Light Chase. Uh, Tons of coconut, the prince is sweetly avoided. And then uh, whipping, whipped topping on top of cake. Three milks, flat based milks. It's definitely undercooked. It tastes like straight pudding, and it's not supposed to taste like that. Undercooked dough and coconut. 
Oh my god. One out of five plus. That was awful. Maybe avoid the first day of festivals. Just maybe. a little bit more of it and regret this, this mistake that I'm coming to. It's actually not that earthy. I'm not mad at it. I think like the chickpeas kind of balance the earthiness of the beans out. So I can, I can do this. This is a beat I can beat up. I'll give it um, four out of five beats. It's rare when I like something as beats. And I like this. Uh -huh, uh -huh. It seems that no matter what we do, we can't escape the beats of the past. Maybe it's the fact that uh, nobody ate the beats at Festival of the Arts, so here we are stuck getting more beats at Flower and Garlic. But beets and garlic, I mean, I'm, I'm willing to give it a chance. How bad could it be? It's very garlicky and earthy, as you would expect beets to be, with the garlic. Terrible. Three out of five plus. I'm not in love with it yet. So I'm gonna eat the regular garlic with these beautiful chickpeas on them. With this amazing pita that they would fire. It's so crunchy. Oh, the chickpea on top. Chickpea on top is a really nice addition. It's a classic smooth garlic hummus, one that you would ex expect when you try hummus. It's very well executed. I would give it a four out of five chickpeas. It's, it tastes fresh, freshly made, and I'm not mad at it at all. So here we are, the pita, the basic hummus. Like my chickpeas on top. Let's go ahead and dig in here. Ooh. There's something on top of that hummus. It's not traditional. Something that gives it a bit of tart, a little punch. That is very good. Give that four out of five points. So far, it's the best one. Really tasty. So we have some of this beautiful bread that you can get from Sanaa with avocado hummus. It's like guacamole, and I'm into it. Mm. Mm. That is my favorite one. It's tangy, it's sweet, crunch, it's delicious. I absolutely love that. That is a five out of five. That is the reason to get this whole hummus flavor. I love that hummus. I'll tell you what. I'm not talking about food for a second. I have figured out the path to world peace. Believe it or not. Despite all our differences, borders, cultures, languages, the one thing that all these cultures have in common the American, Mexican, Italian, Moroccan, Russian, I don't know about Russian, uh, Indian, <laughs> Australian, if it's the one thing that we all agree on, is you dip bread in things and you enjoy it. Each of us has their own way, different dippings, different style of bread, but the one thing that we all agree on, the best way to eat bread, is you dip it in something. If we can figure that out, that's your path to real peace. Not alcohol, not everybody will, nobody in the world being hungry is probably better, but you know how the world is. Dipping and bread is the first way to get there. I'm not a politician, leave me alone. So, you have this avocado hummus, which like the princess said, is basically Moroccan guacamole. But here we are. Ooh. Oddly enough, it really just tastes like guac. But right here, four or five bucks. That feels more adventurous, that's definitely better than classic. It's definitely my favorite one by far. Festival 
item, the potato pancake. Now, we bought this item, I feel like, every year since we started doing food reviews for this festival. And it started with a dollop of applesauce, and the amount of applesauce they give you just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And I usually like to scrape it to the side because I only like like a sample amount of applesauce. I don't want my potato pancakes swimming in it. Look, it's like a tiny pancake. You wouldn't even realize that with all this applesauce. But the applesauce by itself is fire. I think Bear's gonna wanna steal it all from me. Let me try this potato pancake. So it compares to the lot case from Festival of Holidays. I feel like the flavor palette in the lot case is a little bit better than the potato pancakes, but I still think they're pretty good. Like, they're munchable. Both of them are, are munchable. And I always like a good potato pancake because I feel like if almost every culture, if not almost every culture, has some form of potato pancake. Even my Persian culture, we have our own. Four out of five potatoes. How do you say four in Persian? Four? Chahar. Chahar? Chahar. You gotta roll the R. Whether it's the potato pancake here in Germany or the La Case at the uh, Lahayim booth for us the holidays, I feel like this is the one returning item we never get tired of. This is the same item year after year. Probably like five or six years now, we never play the item. Like ever. Yeah, there's a little bit more applesauce than you might. Yeah, the weight can sometimes be ridiculous, but do we ever not get it? No. Every time. Every single time without fail. I can't say the same about some of the other items that return to festivals every year. Some really terrible ones come to mind. Either way. Yes, I'm gonna steal some of the applesauce. A huge dollop of it because I am an applesauce sleet. Mm. Almost said it's fresh made. A little hint of cinnamon in there? Pretty sure it is. Get rid of that. Go and get more of this applesauce. A nice big bear bite. I kind of think it makes one of Don Leader Hosen and Dan's. Always love this thing. It's really sad because it's so basic. Four out of five plus. been here for a while. I don't like pineapple. I don't like fresh pineapple. I don't like artificial pineapple. I don't like pineapple anyway. I do, however, like tahini. But still not on tahini. I stole the tahini <laughs> so I can review this pineapple that is back again. It tastes like a pineapple. It's whatever. If you like pineapple, you're gonna like it. I don't. I have like pieces of pineapple on my teeth now. I'm not into it. It's like a two and a half out of five pineapples. Take it from Uncle Bear to children. Everything worth eating is shaped like pineapple on stick. All of it. Pineapple and tahini. I said it once, said it twice. Probably sick of me saying it by now. This should always be at the at the refreshment outpost. This should never go away. There's no reason why you shouldn't charge me, what, six, seven dollars for this pineapple and tahino and stick if I'm willing to pay for it. Keep your Mickey pretzels, your Simba pretzels, your Mickey bars, Casey's Corner hot dog, the cat tails from Magic Kingdom, the egg roll cart, this is my personality. Five out of five plus. That's on a Baron Sessie's list. You really can't get wrong with this. Truly.
vegetable dumpling. It is not marked as plant-based, but thank you to Melissa at Vegan Disney World for messaging me and telling me that she, or sending me the um, allergen binder information before we even got here, so I knew that it was safe. Now that is a tasty dumpling. Lots of um, lemongrass in it. Really good. I'm into it. It's like a three and a half out of five dumplings. I think it would be better if it was a little bit crispier. Because it's pan fried, it's supposed to be a little more crispy, but it's not. It like kind of falls apart, like it's overcooked. Look at that. Colorful little thing. When it comes to a dumpling, I expect more. This is the construction on this dumpling. Like you can see here on the side, it was definitely overcooked. The wrapper is starting to break. You've definitely seen better. We're glad that Vegan Disney World let us know about this. Definitely check them out. I always say, especially in the Disney community, never go to one source, especially for your food or even like your stay opinions. Variety of sources and make up your own mind. We're not here to tell you what to do. We're here for you to help you make a decision. You're not gonna like everything that we like. You may not like anything that Vegan Disney World likes. But we're all here to help. So if there's something that you guys need, speak up. While well, I suffer through trying things that nobody else wants to try. If it was cooked properly, and this may be an off day. The first day of the festival, it would be good. But the like half burn on one side, super doughy on the other side, that texture difference, especially with it like being overcooked, not working for me. I regret all of that. One and a half out of five plus. I'd be willing to give another try later on, but today, that's pretty terrible. by the stand earlier today that like I couldn't decide what was a better way to hold corn. Is, is it this aluminum foil that's not as eco-friendly or is it the husk the way they do it at Mardi Gras? I feel like Mardi Gras does a little bit better than this but this looks seasoned way better. This is the regular corn that we've had every single year. Oh my gosh, that is delicious. I just seasoned perfectly. I love the butter, I love the flavor. This is a five out of five corns. It's corn-tastic. It makes me corny. It make you corny too. This is a family channel, ma'am. <laughs> nice seasoned corn on the cob. We're glad to see this return. It's a simple, but flavorful thing for us to get. Uh, right now, I'm, I'm cool with the foil. Uh, if they make it too juicy, sometimes the stock gets kind of messy. This is the preferred way for me. Mm. It's a mouthful of garlic, crunchy. It's a mess. As I've been reminding people lately, this is not a date snack. Don't get Godzilla breath in, take your date around World Showcase. But when she leaves, come back and get this. Four to five plus. We get two corn options this year as vegans. This one is a spicy corn. See how, how spicy it really is. That's pretty tasty. It starts in super low slow burn, it kind of creeps up on you a little bit more. Now I'm kind of feeling it in the back of my throat. I'm gonna give it like a four and a half out of 10 on the heat scale. It's not like crazy spicy, but I definitely need to go sip some water now. Thankfully I have some. 
in my refillable water bottle because they have refill stations everywhere and make sure that you reuse your water bottle. Don't be buying those plastic bottles. I'm gonna give this um, three out of five corns. This doesn't make me corny. This makes me wanna go chug a bottle of water. But it's tasty, I'm glad we have a new, new uh, corn choice. It's nice to have options. It would be nice to mix the two, like the garlic with the spice. That would be fire. As it as it stands, it's a three out of five corns. We're the spicy version of the corn and cob, so it's just basically spicy corn chips crushed over the corn. Uh, this one made a double. It's a husk and foil. Whatever works. Corn chips are spicy. But when I say spicy, hmm. <coughs> oh, there it goes. <coughs> Maybe a four out of ten on the spice scale. Creeps on the back of the throat. <coughs> Flavor's good, but I prefer the traditional corn better. The garlic gives it a better punch. Corn chips are nice, but it feels like it's missing something. Maybe there's some other spices. I'm gonna give that one three and a half out of five minutes. This is an easily modified corn or watermelon salad. It didn't take like a bunch of like things. It was just fed off and you're good. Um, it kind of reminds me of a deconstructed version of that watermelon pizza that we had at Festival of the Arts. Let's see if it's any good. Mm. It's like soaked and marinated beautifully. Balsamic is amazing. I love it with the berries. I would like this more than the pizza and the sushi that we had at Festival of the Arts. This is a four and a half out of five watermelons. I highly recommend this to get here with the corn. I'm gonna finish all of this. You're not explaining me something, Disney, Epcot, probably Epcot. I really feel like this festival, I'm getting your leftovers. We have beet hummus, or you have a beet hummus, and now you have watermelon salad. Did nobody order the free pizza? I'm kidding, mostly. Swallow it. Yuck. Uh, it's just balsamic on watery mush. It's a one in a five plus for me, not my jam, with a heavy, heavy bias to not liking watermelon. Just can't do it again, I'm sorry. Radish uh, sales, you got the toy box tomatoes, the plant based cheese over here. And plenty of avocado, it's just like a skinny portion of avocado toast. I know avocado is expensive, but bread's not. Mm. 
that is refreshing. I don't often say that about avocado toast. Like, I feel quenched in the food kind. The avocado with, like, the slight sour of the plant-based cheese and the citrus of the tomatoes, that just works. I just wish I could have, like, three of these. I might be good for a few hours, but uh, that's some tasty toast. I was ready to dump on this toast, but we're doing the basics right. It's quite good. I'm gonna give that a three and a half and five plus. So Bear doesn't get to have any. And I get to eat the whole dough by myself and take the cup home. Cheers. Wow. Way more lime than mango. It basically just tastes like a lime dole whip. It's okay, but not my favorite. I'm gonna give it like a two out of five dole whips. And I really wish I could share this with Bear because I don't feel like I'm gonna be able to finish this. I'm gonna have to dump it so quick. But I'm gonna try because I commit to my mistake. Get that dough wet. So we've danced among the plants, we ate the plants, and that has been everything vegan. We love the plants. At 2023 Flower and Garden Festival. Save the plants. What was your favorite thing? Um. What was your favorite thing? I don't, I don't know. Honestly, off the top of my head, I can't think of my favorite thing. I don't think it was at Trowels and Trellis. No? But I don't, I, uh, maybe I'll put it in the comments later because right now Bear's putting me on the spot. I, I honestly spot. don't know. I don't know what you guys think, given what you've seen. Where do you think the vegan food here at Flower and Garden ranks as far as festivals go? Let us know in the comments below. If there's anything else you'd like to see us do, or if this video gets 200 likes, we'll come back and we'll do maybe like a round two of food, a flower and garden. Uh, if there's anything else you'd like to see us do, that's always a new place to find us. Hit that notification bell if you want to see other videos like this. And we have new videos five days a week Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday. We'll see you soon. Be sure to subscribe and try not to fall like I do in life because I am very clumsy. You heard the girl.